When we meet a learner for the first time, we're unlikely to know a huge amount about their academic background, their skills, their current knowledge. We may have proof of certificates and other such evidence, but how relevant are these to the subjects that we want to teach? It's hard to know for sure. Now this video may give more questions and answers, but these are the sorts of questions that we need to think about when we're conducting appropriate initial assessments. Why do we need to bother with initial assessments? Although it would be nice in an academic world and we'd be confident that everybody leaving school has good maths and English skills, it would be nice to assume that all learners taking your course actually want to be there. And it would be nice to know that every learner has the support from friends and family at home. But the fact is, we don't. Not even close. We live in a hugely diverse world and we need to cater for as many people as we can. Quality and diversity, differentiation and inclusion are all embedded within the education and training course, but these are exactly the reasons why we need to do initial assessment. It is very important that we use a variety of initial assessments to evaluate learner starting points. This can be conducted in a variety of ways and you'll need to choose a method that's most suitable for the situation you're in. You could have a chat with your learner individually, asking them questions about their expectations, what their career path is, and also what experience that they've had um, in that line of work. Whilst this might be suitable for some cases, what if they're bending the truth? What if you've got a large number of learners to get through quickly? Will you have time? What if they don't know what it is that they need to know? That's a common one. Now, baseline testing is a good tool to work out current knowledge uh, of your, your candidates. And this assessment could be in the form of a test, uh, a practical piece of work that they can produce, or a, a sequence of skills that they need to demonstrate to you in some way. This can make it easy to record the results and transpose these findings into a grade, a number, or a level. But what if they're having a bad day? Is it fair? What if your test wasn't thorough enough testing all the range of different skills? Again, there are other factors that we need to consider too. If the subject that you're teaching is quite mainstream and not too specialist, you might be able to purchase some pre-made validated tests from providers out there. Using those methods, you can be sure that the questions that you're given are specifically designed and would be accurate and give you an accurate grade. However, what if there are changes in the spec or the syllabus? Has your test been updated to suit that or is it still an old one? What if you're delivering such a specialist subject and you want to check a very specific skill set or subject knowledge? The chances are you're going to need to create your own. But before you can do that, you really need to know exactly what your learners need to know, need to be able to do. If you're teaching to a specific subject or a course specification, then it stands to reason you need to know that spec inside and out. And, and once this has been studied and you understand it, you can then start beginning to build the tests to be able to test your learner's skills, knowledge and understanding. Once you've got the data, you'll then be able to have useful and meaningful information about your learners to help you plan and cater for their needs. That data can be used to help plan and develop long-term and short-term targets. And we tend to document these targets with an individual learning plan or ILP for short. And these can be a great motivating tool for our learners. Or well, how? Why is it motivating? Well, as a teacher, you're going to be communicating in a very positive manner and you're going to be interacting with them on, on a regular basis, giving positive and constructive feedback. 
you're going to make sure that the level that you're talking and, and teaching is level appropriate and not above and beyond their current knowledge and, and skills. And then all of that, it should be stimulating, challenging, and that's all helped by effective lesson planning and suitable and appropriate teaching and learning resources. Some that you can use that have already been created, but more than likely you're going to need to create them yourself.